The Mississippi Department of Mental Health runs a dozen programs across the state that treat mental illnesses and addictions. Soon, they're closing their doors. Because of an $8.3 million budget cut, people in need of mental treatment or care won't be getting it which has some concern. We're going to see an increase in the number of people in the jail. Um, a lot of these people that are needing some type of treatment, and if they don't get it, many times they're out on the street. Here at the state hospital, two units are closing, one including the 29-bed psychiatric ward. Now, in 2015, that program served 66 people. The other unit closing here at the state hospital is the male chemical dependency unit. In 2015, that program served 429 men for substance abuse. Even the state's attorney general speaking up about the issue, telling the clearing ledger, just as bridges will begin to collapse in our state, mental health is a public safety crisis that is primed to explode. Now throughout the state, at least three other hospitals treating mental illness and addictions are being forced to close down programs because of this funding cut. At the state hospital, Alleyware 16 WAPT News. To a developing story now, one state representative says he's considering a plan to take over the city of Jackson. 16 WAPT's Ross Adams talked to some city leaders who are not amused by this, Ross. That's right, Megan. In fact, it's getting a cold reception from leaders here at City Hall. One council member even calling talk of a takeover a publicity stunt. Jackson leaders are slamming a possible plan to let the state take over Jackson's city government. But what's your real motive? Is your real motive to fix the problem or to control it? If they're going to uh, try to do something like this, they need to talk to the people who are currently running the city right now. State Representative Mark Baker is the man who's considering the idea. The Republican from Rankin County told 16 WAPT, quote, I'm just looking at the possibility of coming up with a conservator type bill like you have when you take over a school district. There are some supporters who say a state intervention could help tackle potholes, water problems, and a shrinking budget. Council members say with state government facing a host of its own problems, it's in no position to take control of the capital city's government. This budget is crumbling just like the city of Jackson's budget is. They just cut $400 million out of the corporate taxes, but then they're shutting down state agencies and services. We got plenty of challenges. I won't, I'll, I'll certainly admit that. But for them to propose something like this, uh, it's very similar to you know, the airport situation where they came in and just wanted to take it over. That's a really deep question. Jackson needs some help, but I don't know the answer to that. It all depends on what they are trying to accomplish. You know, so I guess once we figure that out, then we'll know if it's a good idea or not. When we contacted the mayor's office to get a response, they sent us back to a statement from Governor Phil Bryant. The governor has expressed his opposition to the state taking control of the city of Jackson. But now we're live at Jackson City Hall, Ross Adams, 16. WAPT News. This is an interesting one, Ross. Thank you. The state is blaming a $56 million budget mistake on staff error. Treasurer Lynn Fitch says the state has an unbalanced budget for the year that begins July 1st, and she says that could affect the credit rating. State officials claim that error caused lawmakers to overestimate how much money the state could collect during 2017. Now, Fitch says uh, she'll do what she can to protect the state's credit standing and fix the problem. A suspect wanted in a double shooting turned himself in to police. Christopher, did you kill Shavaz? 29-year-old uh, Christopher Bennett surrendered this afternoon. The shooting left one man dead and another in critical condition. He's wanted in connection with the murder of Chivas McElvin. Witnesses say McElvin ran out of a house on Northtown Drive after being shot. He collapsed in the driveway next door. Investigators tell us a second victim was also shot. A jury convicted a man of capital murder in the beating death of a welder at a salvage yard. Prosecutors say David Thomas attacked Fred Jackson at Trimus Recycling back in 2012. John Tess Garvis pled guilty to manslaughter charges for his role in the attack. Jackson was in a coma for a month before he died of his injuries. An ex-convict pled guilty to killing the mother and grandmother of his child 
and another man. Odell Hallman turned himself in after the shooting in Montgomery County last month. Authorities say he had just gotten out of prison in August and had been living in the home with his former girlfriend until she told him to leave. One Jackson Mission group believes teenagers ransacked the van they used to serve the community. It happened